Welcome to the Delmarva Almanac. Each week, we connect you to the best of Delmarva. I'm your host, Dana Kester McCabe. Barbara Warden earned a Master of Fine Arts at the University of Maryland. She was living in Washington, D.C. and starting to make a career as a painter when a divorce diverted her attentions toward more lucrative work to help support her family. She worked for the next two decades for nonprofit groups that advocated for workers, consumers, children, and families. She eventually remarried and began splitting her time between the Mid-Atlantic region and the Bitterroot Valley in Montana. Once her children were out of school, she heard once again the calling to make art. Barbara is now one of the artists at the Studios on Walnut in Milton, Delaware. That's where she and I met a few months ago, and this is what she told me about reviving her creative pursuits. I decided, you know what, time to go back to my studio. But I didn't want to go back as a painter because I'd been away so long, and I just really felt I didn't know if I could get back into it as a painter. And my husband suggested, well, why don't you look at fabric and become a quilter? And I was such a snob about it, I said, why would I become a quilter? And all I could think of were blue-haired ladies and sitting around quilting. But a friend of mine owned a shop in Montana, and I looked at the fabric, and I realized that that's really what I could do, because I love color. So I started quilting. As a matter of fact, the first class and only class I took was with eight ten-year-old girls because that was the only class that was being offered. And this was still in Montana in the Bitterroot Valley. So I took the class and then I just practiced and practiced and practiced. And I worked for a dozen years as a quilter. And I sold a lot of work and had some shows. And then I decided it was time to go back to drawing. So in 2012, I set aside the quilting. For the most part, I do it on commission now rather than building up an inventory. And so I went back to my drawing. Barbara says that the catalog for a drawing show at the Hirshhorn Museum in Washington, D.C. gave her just what she needed to commit to drawing as her primary medium. The curator selected his drawings, some well-known artists, some lesser-known artists. But in the introduction, he said drawings can be preparatory for a painting or sculpture. They can stand on their own as a finished piece of art. And when I saw that, I realized, you know, that's really where I belong uh, in my work. When it's finished, it's finished, and it's a stand by itself drawing. Barbara decided that she wanted a change from the brilliant and diverse color palette of her quilts, and she wanted to create something much more instinctual. She wanted the act of making art to be an exploration unfettered by the constraints of planning them ahead of time. So when I decided to go back to drawing, I decided I'm not using much color. I really want to go back to black and white. I want it to be as spare as possible. So, and I also wanted to, there to be a, a, um, a disjuncture. This was fi fiber in color. This was drawing on paper. And I only use paper. I don't, occasionally I'll use leather because I really do enjoy like, uh, drawing on leather. But most of it's paper. And that's a kind of fiber also, but it's different from the fabric I use. I'm a great believer in automatic drawing. And automatic drawing, historically, I think began with the Dadaists in France in the 1920s. And then a number of Americans picked it up later on, and one of them was Ellsworth Kelly, whose work I've always admired. Um, but there were other artists out on the West Coast in New York who were also experimenting with automatic drawing. And I had worked with an artist in California, very briefly named Lee Mulligan. And Lee simply put out materials on the table and he said, okay, have at it. There were about five or six of us sitting down in the evening uh, in a studio in Santa Monica. And, um, and I never gave up the idea of automatic drawing. So when I would start a drawing, I'd simply close my eyes at random, pick up a drawing tool, whatever it was, and start drawing. And if I had to, I would erase it. Those were my abrasions on the surface. I'd pick up another drawing tool, work with it. But it was very much a random, very gestural, sometimes more linear and defined, so I wanted to work in a lot of different ways with a lot of different materials simultaneously, and that's pretty much what I've done. I start with a gesture, 
and I end up with a resolution, I think, set it aside, and then go on to the next one. Barbara's work is inspired by nature, but it is an expression of it, not an attempt to capture its likeness. Her drawings are rich with texture and movement. She recently finished up an ambitious year-long project that portrayed her reactions to a place that inspires her. I decided that if I was going to draw again, I didn't want to do it piecemeal. And the only way I could figure out to do it and be disciplined about it was to make a drawing a day. So I just decided on the format, it would be small drawings, five by seven, seven by nine. And I looked at artists' work, books that I have of artists' work, whether it's Archie Gorky or women artists like uh, Jay DeFeo or um, Elizabeth Murray, uh, just to see the dimensions that they use. And I figured, okay, small enough was five by seven, eight by 10. Those are legitimate dimensions for small drawing. But then I also wanted to have an anchor for each one of the sections that I was going to, to work on. So there are very large drawings as individual anchors for about 11 or 12 series that I worked on. Uh, I was part of a group show at the Biggs Museum. Uh, after that show was over, I talked to the curator, Ryan Grover. I took up a whole stack of drawings to show him the direction which I was going, and he said, a few months later, after I showed him more drawings, that I'll give you a date. So the, the whole focus originated with the years that I've spent in Montana, because there is a beautiful valley south of Missoula called the Bitterroot Valley. We spent six months there, six months in Lewis, six months back and forth for many years, and my husband's from Montana. So um, I would hike and found a wonderful group of hikers and mountaineers, and we would hike and climb, and it was wonderful. So that became my focus for the 365 days. The first set of drawings in the first month was stone, then came ice, then came rain, wind, restless ground, light, uh, echo memory, each one was, and I really just wanted for the most part one word, and if I could get one syllable word, then that would be even better. So that became the focus, and every step along the way, I talked with Ryan, we met, he and his assistant Reggie, uh, the three of us, and we talked it through, and he made some suggestions, I asked questions, he gave answers, he asked questions, I gave answers, and it just worked out very well, it was a good working relationship, and it still is. Uh, so, in fact, I wound up with an inventory when I took everything to the bigs last February. I wound up with 481 drawings. <laughs> no, I couldn't believe it. And Ryan said to me, do you know what you have done? I said, no, tell me. So he said, it, the total is 481. And the bigs has just been remarkable and wonderful in supporting everything that I've done and Ryan Grover is an excellent curator, so it's been a very good experience. Barbara's show at the Biggs Museum in Dover, Delaware was a big success. Her drawing, Memory Wall Echo, from her 365 series, was juried into the September exhibit at the Art League in Alexandria, Virginia, at the Torpedo Factory. And her drawing, Restless Ground 7, was recently chosen to hang in Delaware Senator Chris Coon's office. Visit our website, delmarvaalmanac.com slash arts, and get links to her website. Well, that's all for this edition of the Delmarva Almanac. Be sure to follow us on Facebook or Twitter, and next week join us to learn more about our local culture and get connected to our natural wonders. We'd like to thank our community partners, the Friends of Delmarva Public Radio, and our underwriters for their help in bringing this program to you, our audience. If you'd like to become an underwriter for this program, visit delmarvaalmanac.com slash support. Our theme music was provided by Brightside Studio. This show has been a Moonshell production. Thanks for listening. Until we meet again, may the rhythms and tides of Delmarva bring you good fortune. <laughs>